Last time out in Cape Town, we witnessed one of Formula E's best ever races. And we go green in Cape Town. With major drama. Championship leader Pascal Verlein careers into the back of Sebastian Buemi. I'm out. And jaw-dropping skill. An outrageous overtake from Antonio Felix da Costa. Weaving all over the back. He's done it! Oh, my God. What? Antonio Felix da Costa launched himself into the championship fight with an emotional first win for Porsche. After the drama of Cape Town, we've travelled 4,000 miles across the Atlantic to South America for another brand-new venue. Yes, and once again, we come to you from the heart of one of the most vibrant cities on planet Earth, Sao Paulo, and for Formula E's very first race in the incredible Brazil. And it's all happening here at the Samba Drome, home of the city's famous carnival, and soon to be packed full of the world's most motorsport crazy fans. So prepare to go racing Samba style. This is the Julius Bear, Sao Paulo e -Prix! We are in Sao Paulo. We are live. This is round six of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. It's the first time that we have brought the party to Brazil. And I can tell you what, we have landed in the capital of the party. Absolutely fantastic. The Samba Band is playing behind us. I'm joined by Nelson Piquet Jr. and Oliver Askew, former Formula E champion, former Andretti driver, you are in great company for the rest of the afternoon. It must be a proud moment for you, Nelson, to be here on this track in Sao Paulo as a Brazilian. Amazing to be here. Uh, well, Formula E has two Brazilian champions over here, and finally the, the public is getting to see a little bit of uh, what electrifying world, these amazing races with these amazing drivers, amazing manufacturers. So I'm really happy that everybody here in Brazil is being able to watch this amazing race that's about to about to start any second. So uh, glad it's finally here. I wish I would be racing, but um, it's great, just great to be here in the atmosphere. Samba arriving close to us soon in the second, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be an amazing race. Oh, it really is. The atmosphere is absolutely awesome. I'm gonna ask my friend Matt, who's the big guy on the camera, if you could just turn around and try and get a shot of the Samba band, who looks absolutely fantastic in national costume. Oliver, this is quite an event so far. I mean, we've been to, to many, many FE races, but the atmosphere on this one is really special. Yeah, over 40,000 fans here expected today. Very impressed with how much noise is here on, on the grid. And uh, I think this track is going to race really, really well. It's unlike uh, many Formula E tracks on, on the calendar. Long straightaways, heavy braking zones, and I think the, the championship order could get flipped on its head today. Really interesting surface down the uh, the starting grid. This is I've never seen this before. This is kind of... It's like an asphalt with a, with a special coating. It's going to be really grippy. It seems very grippy, yes, and, and the engineers and drivers have set their launch control accordingly. Yeah, it's going to be really good. We hope you can stay with us for the rest of the afternoon because, as you can hear, the atmosphere is really building. The drivers are really excited. I think they're overheating because it's extremely hot here in Sao Paulo. Uh, all the drivers are wearing those cooling vests. Is that what they are, guys, those cooling vests? They are. They're trying to cool down a bit. But we're in Brazil. It needs to be warm. Absolutely. Race about to start. Let's <laughs> warm up those... Uh, Batteries, those engines, that energy. Yeah, but earlier on, Nelson, you said, oh, this is mild for Sao Paulo. Don't <laughs> it worry about it. It's not a problem. All right, so stay with us, as I said, because we go green very, very soon at the Sao Paulo Ipri. Last time out in Cape Town, the talk was all about Antonio Felix da Costa and that incredible move to take the win. Antonio Felix da Costa with a farcical move. Da Costa 
wins for Porsche for the first time. Come on! Come on! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Antonio Felix da Costa. What <laughs> a win that was in Cape Town. Is it uh, sunk in yet? What you achieved? It has, yeah. Just coming out of a couple of difficult situations. Your sponsors start to, to doubt you, some of your family. I push myself a lot, obviously, and all of this put together. I was just so emotional on, on that in-lap and after the race that it's been a while since I was like that and winning a race from 11th, it was cool. There was a moment that I want to replay uh, with you when you passed Jean-Eric Verne. Let's just talk us through what is going through your mind here. So, uh, I have to say, at this point, I'm completely blind. The team's telling me to come down, bring it home, be safe, and I just went for a very, very, very risky move on a part of the track that no one's been the whole weekend, dirty, fast, and I have to say that I was lucky to come away from it. I went home and I sat and I approached this as a mistake, you know, a mistake that worked out in the end, but I was, I'm, I was not in a position in my season to try that move, if I'm fully honest. I'm not in a position to crash trying to win a race with a lap to go, where second place points would have been so important as well for me and the team. Had I been out of the race because of that, you know, we would be here now having very different conversations. So you're saying that you wouldn't do that again if you had the option to? Look, in the heat of the moment at that time, it felt like it could have been done and it was done. I risked my race, I risked Jeb. He was more sensible than I was that day. And Have you told him this? No. Have you spoken to him about no. it? First? No, OK. So this just stays I, between yeah, us I and, can, and maybe I can, a few I other cannot people. Him. I cannot <laughs> okay. tell him. Is this a massive turning point for you? Obviously, this is a new season at Porsche. You've really got to it's make been, your mark. Yeah, look, it's been a tricky start. Uh, everyone's had to learn a new car, a new tyre. And at the same time, I had to meet 100 new people. How do they work? When I need something, who do I go to? Then I'm a little bit angry at myself because it's something that I still think that I'm very good at is adapting to something quick. So it's been a, a steep you know, learning curve with the team and the car and uh, building momentum. But I feel like we're close. I'm very lucky to have those guys around me. Pascal's been helpful. There's big leadership in this team. No one here is bigger than Porsche. The goal is clear. We have to win this as a manufacturer and then one of us win it on the drivers. And it, that can be you. You can be the driver to win it for Porsche. I don't see why not. It's been a little bit trickier to start, but the championship is now also a bit longer. Well, I think we're 31% of the way through this season, so you've got 69% to wrap up the championship. Oh, Easy. Easy. Happy days. I Thanks very much. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Just a little over 20 minutes to the start of round six of the ABB FIA Formula e World Championship in Sao Paulo, and the home heroes didn't have a good qualifying session. Lucas de Grassi hit the wall. Sergio said a camera hit a big bump and that forced him to uh, retire from the session and he will be starting a long way down the field. Championship leader Pascal Verlein hit the wall as well, coming out of turn eight, and as a result, he is all the way down in 18th place. Robin Freitz is returning this weekend after four races off. A little bit rusty with this Formula E car as he slithered wide at turn one. Jake Dennis, the second place man in the championship, only 14th on the grid. It was a Jaguar head-to-head -head in the quarterfinal. Mitch Evans beating Sam Bird, so Evans will be starting third on the grid. Bird himself has a five-place grid drop after a collision with Evans in Hyderabad, so he is down in 10th place for the Jaguar TCS racing team. The final was Antonio Felix da Costa against Stoffel van Dorn. Da Costa, the race winner last time out. Stoffel van Dorn, the reigning champion from last season. Van Dorn yet to really get off the mark so far this year, but he managed to beat Stoffel van Dorn uh, beat Antonio Felix da Costa, I should say, by less than a tenth of a second to make it nine pole sitters in the last nine races. Delight for DS Penske after a challenging start to the season for them. And the reigning champion is back on form. Stoffel van Dorn on pole position for the Grand uh, for the E Prix later on this afternoon. A really, really strong performance from the Belgian. The now the Brazilian national anthem ahead of the race.
What an unbelievable atmosphere it is here. I'm delighted to be joined by Letizia Buffoni, Olympian in skateboarding, also six times X Games gold medalist, no less. Letizia, you're a legend in Brazil. We have our first Formula E race here. How's your experience been? Man, I've been here all day and it's been amazing. I've been to many F1 events, but this is so different. Like you don't hear anything. And out of nowhere, there's a car flying by. They're so fast. I got to see the garage. I got to meet some of the drivers and I'm loving it. You got to meet some of the drivers, but they also got to meet a fellow driver because you're starting to drive as well. Yeah, I've been driving for a couple of years now. I've been doing a lot of uh, off-road stuff but uh, I really want to try other stuff, you know, and see what do I like the most. And just very quickly, the respect you must have as a fellow sports person, a fellow athlete, to see what these drivers do, it's incredible. It's incredible, yeah, especially like in a day like today, it's really hard, there's a lot of people. It's a really short course, you gotta, you know, do your best and go fast, so it's not easy. Amazing to talk to you, have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. Nice one, thank you, Radzi. Uh, were you any good on a skateboard, Nelson? Uh, mm, I wouldn't say so, it's a bit dangerous. I prefer riding a bike without any shoes, without a t-shirt. I think that's safer for me. Yeah, I, I was absolutely dreadful as a kid on a skateboard. Well, let's get back to the main reason why we are here. We're just about to go green, as our commentator, Jack Nichols, says. As a driver, what are your preparations now? How do you get yourself into a zone on a brand new track, which has its own dangers up and down this circuit? Well, if I'd be racing here with all the friends, all the family, it is a bit of a challenge because a lot of people, but uh, if it was any other race, obviously try to be in your own little world. Try not to get distracted by anything else around you because there are a lot of fans, a lot of friends over here, family, um, and try to keep concentrated, try to keep cool, try to think about what's going to happen and try all the procedures from the start to the first corner, all the buttons and knobs you're going to have to press and change through that lap and just try to keep concentrated, keep focused, keep positive, get that ego boost and, and know what you're going to do. Does the, does the strategy keep replaying in your mind? Everything that you've talked about with your team principal and your engineer, does that keep going through? Is that on a rotation? Well, it's more yourself, what you're going to do, how you're going to drive it, how you're going to start, how you're going to take the first corner. It's just that imagination positively on how you're going to take the start. All right, brilliant. Well, there's plenty more to come from us after this. I'm going to quickly catch up with the most successful driver in Formula E history. He's had 13 wins, 40 podiums, and on the 105th race in your Formula E history, you finally can say got a home race, Lucas Degrassi. <laughs> yeah, it's finally, finally in Brazil. I'm super happy to be here. Although I would not have chosen this starting grid, uh, but I did a mistake in quali in my first lap. I touched the wall and I had to pit, but the car is 100%. Uh, we're going to fight very hard. Uh, to try to score some points and give a good show. Absolutely. I mean, you started this season, your first season with Mahindra, with a podium finish. The points haven't been uh, quite so easy since then, but you never give up. You're always in it for a fight till the end. Exactly. We never give up. We're going to fight until the very last lap. The race is, we always say the race only finishes at the flag, so we have still 31 laps uh, to do the, the moves here and to go forward. What's the strategy going to be? How can you stay out of trouble and work your way up into the points? Uh, from here is actually the easiest spot because you have everything under your control. So I'm going to try to see if I can find uh, good spots to position myself and to attack from the beginning. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. Always seeing the positive side. Thank you very much, Lucas Degrassi. Hoping a bit of risk and reward is going to pay off. Well, I'm currently joined by James Barkley, team principal at Jaguar. First of all, James, a very interesting quality situation, both in jewels, both going head to head. How do you assess where things are right now? Yeah, I think so far it's been a really positive day. Uh, yet again, we've shown really, really great performance from the, from the car for Jaguar I Type 6. So we're gonna, we know we have a really competitive car. Both drivers in the top five it was a really good result from Quali. So long race ahead today, and that's going to be a really, really challenging one, but I think an exciting one to watch. In terms of converting to points, we've seen Mitch in this position a few times before this season. Will there be a difference in strategy or any changes? I think the core ingredients fundamentally are there, actually. That's the key thing. It's not like we have a, a fundamental issue. We actually have had some really un unlucky races. We made some things we probably could have done a bit better on our side, but fundamentally, all the core ingredients are here for a great result. So today is about keeping calm, keeping collected. It's a really strategic race. 
amb te ambient temperature, long straights, all sorts of things that you can get caught out by. So, yeah, we've got our plan. Uh, we're going to try and execute it well, but it's going to be a really, a really kind of, I think, a, a nail biter of a race right to the end. In terms of out of 10, how exciting might this be? I think this is right up there. It really is. I, of the races we've seen in the Canada to date and formerly in our, in our nine years, uh, I think this could be right up there for a race down right to the wire. And potentially you guys on the podium again? Oh, that's the aim. That's the aim every time. You know, we, we take this incredibly seriously. We push incredibly hard. We have a really fast team. And, um, yeah, it's why we're here. So that's our job today to try and convert this into a great position. Thank you very much for your time, James. All the very best today. And it has to be said here, in terms of the energy, there's nothing quite like this for an inaugural race here in Brazil. I've said blown away. The energy, the excitement, the passion for what is a growing sport. But it's safe to say when this race gets underway, it's going to be something special. It's going to be fast. It's going to be frenetic. And it's not to be missed. All right, come on, gang. Let's start the grid war. Let's see if we can find Stoffel van Dorn. The man sat on pole position having a chat at the moment with his engineer. Stoff, uh, congratulations, first of all, on getting the car on pole. This is where it starts. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling good. Um, you know, obviously good qualifying for me. Uh, great to be on pole position here in Brazil. But it's going to be a long race. Um, you know, it's, um, it's a very challenging one with the, the long straights, the, the slipstream effect. So, yeah, uh, it's not going to be a straightforward one. Difficult start to the season. Best uh, result of the season so far. Last race out in Cape Town. Is this the climb for you? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to do a bit better today. All right, good man. Uh, Pascal Verlein's got 80 points. You've got 14. Can it be done? <laughs> well, today it cannot be done, but uh, in the long run, maybe it can. So, I mean, the championship is still long. We've been making good progress in the start of the year, and uh, yeah, we just need to confirm it again today. Earlier on in qualifying, we talked with yourself and Antonio Felix de Costa, who's behind you, and he was saying that there's a possibility, because you're both professionals and friends, that you might be swapping places a couple of times. I think it's likely that the lead is going to change a few times. Um, you know, we're we're not really making any special strategies, let's say, because it's just uh, out of our control. We do the best we can, and, uh, you know, with the slipstream effect, like I said, it could be possible that there's a few swaps. And this music that's on behind us, is this your kind of jam? Uh, no. no. What do you listen to, then, in your free time? I don't know. I don't really listen to music. You're boring. All right, see you later. Thanks very much. That's disgraceful stuff, Van Dorn. Unbelievable! He's a reigning champion and he doesn't listen to music. That's an absolute disgrace. Anyway, let's find Antonio Phoenix de Costa. Just get through the scrum. Uh, one of the most charismatic drivers on the grid. Uh, he's talking to our German colleagues. That's Matthias, by the way, Matt. He's the, uh, he's the uh, German host. Let's go over to Mitch Evans, who's here. Let's go to Mitch Evans, who's here in third. Here he is. Hey, Mitch, um, I'm going to ask you the first question that I ask everyone at the beginning of a race. How are you feeling? Hot. Are you hot? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm hot. Um, I'm feeling good. This race is going to be nuts, I think. Um, it's going to be a real chess match. So, um, what do you mean by that? Just explain to us. Uh, just in terms of whether energy consumption, um, try to manage that, try not to use your cards too early. And um, obviously, this card's got a massive toll effect, so try and use that to your advantage. But everyone knows that. So, it's just trying to yeah, play the smart game and the long game. Try and be patient, I guess. Um, but yeah, the card's been quick, but hopefully, we've got some pace in the race. and. Uh, but yeah, you know, today the, the person that's going to win is going to come down to strategy. All right, you're the perfect person to ask this question. For those people who are joining Formula E for the very first time, this is a battery in this car. It's an electric car. You've got to regenerate energy, but you've also got to use it. And we've got some very long straights where you're going to get some huge, huge uh, uh, mileage out of these cars. But you've also got to regen that energy. How does that work? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we, I mean, the philosophy of the championship, we start the race with not enough energy to finish. And how we achieve the range is basically by coasting throughout the straights and then recovering the energy through the, actually, for the, both, both axles. We use that energy to really recover a lot. Um, but obviously, we deploy a lot down the straight. So it's trying to find that balance and distributing, distributing the energy the most efficiently around the, around the lap. But every, every corner, every straight, we're lifting off trying to optimize the energy we've got. So um, it's not easy to manage because everyone's got the same, but how you sort of, Play your cards at the right time, use energy, save. That's what it comes down to. But it's, uh, we get it right sometimes, but um, yeah, see what we got. All right, perfect. Thanks, Mitch. Appreciate that. Perfect explanation about what Formula E is all about. Nikki. Pascal Verlein, our championship leader, 80 points. Your top three, first three races, P2 was the worst position. But the points didn't come, unfortunately, in Cape Town. What can you do today for a bit of redemption? Well, we're starting P18, so it won't be an easy race. But, uh, yeah, let's hope for, for a good race, a clean race with a couple of good points. 
um, and uh, yeah, hopefully then there's a bit of time until Berlin and uh, need to find out why this weekend somehow the confidence and uh, the performance was not uh, there. But uh, the season is still long, so looking forward to this race. Amazing, amazing place, a lot of people, and I'm sure we will show a, a nice race for everyone. Because it seems like this track would actually massively suit the Porsche powertrain. Obviously, you've got your teammate Antonio Felix Costa on the front row. Well, generally in the race we are strong. Um, we were a bit concerned uh, for qualifying coming here, but um, I think Antonio showed uh, different. All right, thanks very much. We'll let you go. Pascal Verlein there, hoping to score some crucial points to continue his championship lead. All right, here we go. Let's find Antonio Felix Acosta, who's always sat down. Uh, come on in, Matt. Big Matt, he's having a chat with a friend. Uh, here we go. All right, thank you. No worries. Don't worry about it, my friend. Hey, Antonio. Um, I always seem to find you on the grid, sat down, just chilling out. This is just, this is kind of a reflection of who you are and your personality. Is it? Yeah, man, I just, they're, like, they're, it's super busy. Like, I just, I hide here a little bit, say hi to, I only stand up for, like, Emerson Fittipaldi, you know? Fair enough. I like that. I like that. I appreciate that. Uh, I let's stood up for you, though. Uh, well, I'm glad you sat down, because if you were stood up, I'd just be looking over your head. So I appreciate you sitting down. more my <laughs> exactly. Listen, stop talking. We've not got a lot of time. Let's get into the race. Superb performance, by the way, brother, uh, out in Cape Town. Uh, it's the climb for you personally within the Porsche team. Uh, you've got a lot to do because you've got former champion Stoffel van Dorn in front of you. But is this part of your climb to success this season in the brand new Gen 3 car? It's, it's good to see how, how we're building our momentum. It's super tough in the beginning. Uh, to be honest, it wasn't as bad as it looked. We've made a few operational mistakes that made it look a bit worse, but the car's been strong. Pascal's been winning races. He's leading the championship, and I'm happy to finally be able to produce some good results for these guys as well. And, yeah, like you said, like the momentum's coming. Let's hope it keeps on building in this direction because we've still got a long season ahead and potentially you know, can win this, I think. So. Just quickly, give us a couple of positives about this car. What's it good at and what's it not so good at? Very efficient. Perfect, which is perfect for Formula E, right? Perfect for Formula E, and right. now it's also fast. <laughs> and now it's also fast. Listen, I'll let you crack on. You get on with it, brother. Uh, all the best. Antonio Felix de Costa, let's go over to Nicky. OK, let's catch up with Jake Dennis for Avalanche. Andretti, keeping cool there in your little ice fest. Does that actually do anything? Does it work? Yeah, it works well, to be fair, especially in these hot conditions. This and Jakarta, we're going to be needing it a lot, but extremely hot conditions, track temper around about 50, 60 degrees, something crazy. My feet are burning on the, uh, on the tarmac, so it's going to be a challenging race. Yeah, let's talk about the battery temperature because we've never really had to, well, we haven't seen anyone had to manage it over the course of the season so far, but that seems to be a bit of a talking point. How are you going to manage the temperature with the battery? Yeah, just uh, it's quite challenging this year. Like last year, we could do a lot of different things with the regen on the paddle and stuff like this. This year is a little bit more difficult. So I think people are just going to start derating massively. So start to lose a lot of power in the last four or five laps. So yeah, it's definitely not over. It's definitely not over until uh, until the checker flag drops. But I got a lot of work to do. To be fair, I need to pass a lot of cars, and uh, there's some quick guys up front. So I'm going to get involved, do a few brave moves, and see where we end up after around about. 20 laps. Yeah, I mean, it's very much doable. I mean, the first three races, I think your worst position was P2. So it's a phenomenal start to the season, but no points in the last two races. Thanks for the reminder. Sorry. <laughs> it's not like everyone else has been telling you that for a while. <laughs> no, not at all. But uh, we can definitely pull some like, big points here. You know, uh, I'm feeling confident that we can move forward. The practice, the practice pace looked really strong in the energy lap. So, yeah, just need to uh, get my elbows out and yeah, do some moves. And just very quickly, is the most important thing just to finish ahead of Pascal Verlein because he's the only guy ahead of you at the moment? Nah, definitely not. I just need to, uh, you know, focus on the on the team championship and uh, and myself and just bag these points. It's a long way to go in the championship, but uh, I just need to optimise the fast car, what I've got right now. All right, do it. Thanks very much, Jake Dennis. There we go. Let's see what he can do with his Avalanche Andretti car. All right, I'm with Way. Thank you very much. There you go. That's always nice, isn't it? Emerson Fittipaldi, Brazilian racing legend, two-time Formula One world champion. Uh, this is quite an occasion, having Formula E in Sao Paulo. It feels great, right? Oh, it's a fantastic. I was just talking to the mayor of Sao Paulo. Now we have Formula E and Formula One. I'm, I'm from Sao Paulo. We are very happy to have Formula E. It'll be a first year. Formula E is putting the flag in Brazil, in Latin America after Mexico, and uh, be great. 
It really will. And I've seen you at a couple of Formula E races. Uh, how do you think the progression from the Gen 1 car, Gen 2 car, and now this Gen 3 car, how far do you think it's going to take this racing series? I, I was very impressive yesterday. Down on the straight here, the speed, acceleration, talking to Lucas de Grasse, is very powerful, very difficult to drive. I mean, it's great. Formula E is growing all over the world. It's a fantastic formula. It's the visionaire for Alejandro and Jean Todd yeah. that start the category. And Alberto, he's here too. Yeah, he is. I mean, they, if you think about 10 years ago, someone come to you and say, we are going to do an electrical formula, say, oh, come on. You know? <laughs> and he, we are fantastic. Success. But it's, obvious, it's also going to get better and better, isn't it, as technology evolves. And, you know, we find we get the best efficiency out of the cars as well. So it can only be a huge progression. Um, looking at today's line up in the grid, which is what we're on now, who do you think is going to win? Where are you going to put your money, Emerson? Well, you know, it's difficult to say because the racing is so dicey, wheel to wheel, you know, and the, who is going to be drafting to save energy? Who is going to be leading? I mean, it's difficult to say. That's why Formula E is excited to watch because you never know to the end of the race exactly. how much the driver is administrating the battery, how much he's, he's still on to go. And, uh, you know, it's this technology is going to be on a family car in the near future. Absolutely. What they are learning here. Yeah, we see All the car manufacturers here is a fantastic... Uh, W way to, to learn. Absolutely. Thank you very Thank much, you. Emerson Fittipaldi. All right, it's time to go green, ladies and gentlemen, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Formula E returns to South America, bringing the party to Brazil. ready for the sixth round of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. Antonio Felix da Costa almost ready for the sixth round of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. The headrest going in. The Portuguese may be the favorite for this race, starting in second position, winning last time out. But the man with the number one in his car, the reigning champion, Stoffel van Dorn, moved from Mercedes to DS Penske over the off-season, has struggled a little this year. He's all the way down in 13th in the championship, a best result of seven, which was last time out in Cape Town. He will be hoping for a much, much stronger performance today, and he's starting from a much, much stronger starting position. So you have to imagine that he is going to be in for a very, very strong afternoon here in Sao Paulo. First time we are about to go electric street racing in Brazil. Welcome to the sixth round of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship, the 2023 Julius Fair Sao Paulo E Prix. We've had some epic races so far this season, and the expectation is the next 31 laps about around the Anyembi Samba Drome is going to be no different. I'm Jack Nichols. Alongside me is the former Formula E and Formula One driver Karun Chandok. Karun, take us around this new circuit for Formula E. Yeah, thank you very much, Jack. This is 11 corners that the drivers have got to navigate around here. Mainly slow speed corners, no real high speed challenges like we saw at Cape Town through the corners, but some very fast straights. In fact, we are seeing the highest speed in Formula E history down these straights this weekend. Turn four, five, six, very tricky at the uh, at the end of the, the back straight, shall we say. Turn seven and eight, a double right-hander but the attack mode is on the outside of turn three, and that is where the drivers will have to be really careful because it's dusty offline. This is how the grid will line up. At the back of the field, unfortunately, is the Sao Paulo native, Lucas de Grassi, after crashing out of qualifying. Andre Lotterer is alongside him in 21st position. Robin Freins is making his return to the series, having missed the, the previous four races after breaking his hand in Mexico City. Pascal Verlein, the championship leader, is down in 18th on the grid. Sergio Sede Camera, the other Brazilian from Bel 
Palo Horizonte is 16th on the grid. Jake Dennis is second in the championship, lines up in 14th spot for the Avalanche Andretti squad. Sebastian and Rene Ras, uh, Sebastian Buemi and Rene Ras, just missing out on the top 10. Bird starts 10th, the five place grid drop after colliding with Mitch Evans a couple of races ago. Max Gunter had a penalty also. jean eric Verne lines up seventh for DS Penske. And then it's Jake Hughes, sixth for the Neon McLaren team. Nick Cassidy, fifth for Envision Racing. Eduardo Mortara is fourth on the grid. Mitch Evans looking to score big points for the first time this season. He lines up third. Race winner last time, De Costa is second. Stoffel van Dorn, the reigning champion, is on pole position. The Belgian looking to get his championship challenge a little bit back on track. Antonio Felix Da Costa, if he wins today, could really close the gap to his Tagoya Porsche rival and teammate Pascal Verlein at the top of the standings. But we're in for a fascinating race this afternoon, Karun. All the drivers saying this could be one of the craziest races that we've seen in Formula E. Scan the QR code, let, uh, let us know and get involved in the Formula E predictor game to, uh, to, to get involved there. But no one really knows what to expect here. No, it's roasting hard, track temperature in the mid to high 40s. And what, we, what we're going to see, I think, is a very tactical race. It's going to be about the slipstream, which is extremely powerful here. And when do the drivers use their attack modes? Because they're all saying nobody wants to lead this race until the final couple of laps. So, uh, yeah. Let, let's see how the, the chess match works out. Yeah, exactly. It certainly is a, a chess match at times in Formula E. The driver's doing some burnouts to try and get some temperature into the rear tyres to get the best grip off the line and the charge down towards the first corner. It's a 90 degree right-hander, turn one. So Stoffel van Dorn will be on the racing line for the run down towards the, the first turn, but De Costa will have the inside line. That's Mitch Evans's view from third on the grid in the Jaguar TCS racing car. 31 laps of action coming up here in Brazil. Van Dorn on pole, De Costa alongside him. And we go green in Sao Paulo. Down towards turn one, and Van Dorn's got away nicely, and Mitch Evans is coming on the right-hand side of the Jaguar. Evans is trying to get second, away from Antonio Felix De Costa. De Costa's got the inside, though, holds that second place. They're side by side between Cassidy and Mortara. They make it safely through. It all gets a bit tight towards the back hole, and there's contact, and that is Norman Nato. Norman Nato's gone into the back of someone and lost his front wing, but it is Van Dorn who manages to hold the lead. De Costa is up into second. Evans is third. Disaster for Nato, but Van Dorn has got away well at the head of the field, still fighting as they come up towards turns four, five, and six. De Costa did pretty well, Karun, to hold on to that second place. Yeah, Nato completely misjudged the speed of gap there. Oh, the other, there's yeah, an Andretti Andretti's car. broken and Mortara's broken too, so Mortara's got front wing damage, I think. Lotterer might have suspension damage and possibly out of this one because he couldn't turn left. And there you can see him pulling off at the side of the circuit. The fighting is still going on further back as they come now towards turn seven. There's a car right at the back of the field there as well. That must be Mortara right at the back of the field. But Van Dorn leads, De Costa second, Evans third. Cassidy is right behind him in the green in vision as they come out of the final right-hander and across the line to complete lap one. Huge disappointment for Mortara. I started fourth on the grid and he's had a terrible start to the season with just three points. But up at the front, though, the race has said, look, Van Dorn got a perfect getaway, and actually De Costa did him a bit of a favour there by just holding up the rest of the pack and let Van Dorn settle in this. Gunter, Gunter straight across that first chicane. Gunter crashed out of a strong position last time out in uh, Cape Town, and he's made a mistake here to drop down the order. Ninth for Max Gunter, Mortara in the other uh, Maserati has returned to the pit lane. The cars now come towards turn four, and Cassidy in fourth place in the green envision is looking the most racy. Now, with these big braking zones that you've got around the circuit, the drivers will be recovering a lot of energy. A huge amount of energy is put back in the battery every time they get on the brakes. So, what, what is going to be interesting now to see is what does Van Dorn do? Does he try and take attack mode early in the race, shuffle back into the pack? Or does he stick up front? Let's take a little replay to start. Look to the right-hand side, and you can see the drivers on the racing line, Evans and Van Dorn, got a much better getaway than the drivers on the left. A further back track, the red and white car in the middle, Nato, already there was, was in a tight position, three wide. But then we got to the hairpin, he completely oh, yeah. misjudged the gap. 
to the McLaren. Motaro went straight on as well. Something happened with Motaro yeah, as well up at turn three. That was a strange one. It was Jake Hughes that uh, that he just Nato just plowed into the back of. Hughes is still running in the McLaren ahead of his teammate Rene Rass at the moment in sixth and seventh. Lap two of 31 now. The big winners from that. Rene Rass made up four places. Berline, the championship leader, made up five spots on the opening lap and he's now up into 13th place. There's some action going on as Oliver Rowland gets his elbows out and tries to get ahead of Fedestraz. Gunter's under investigation for not following the race director's instructions. But up at the front, it's Van Dorn, De Costa, Evans, Cassidy, Vern in fifth, then the two orange McLarens. Oh, there's contact in there, Buemi. Buemi has gone into the back. I think of Max Gunter as they were fighting over ninth place. And is that the end of the race for Sebastian Buemi? He'll try and get it into reverse and get going again, but disbelief for Sylvain Felipe, the team principal. Van Dorn still leading, De Costa second, Evans third, Cassidy fourth. There's such a concertina effect in that turn four, five, six area. The two championship leaders now running together in 11th and 12th, Berlin and Dennis. Up at the front, though. So just to remind people at home, in case you haven't seen it, with attack mode, the drivers have the option. You can either do it as one minute and then three minutes, three minutes of one minute or two minutes each. So you have to take attack mode twice during the E3. And that will give you a power boost for that period of time. As they come down now towards turns one and two. That was a close fight there. I think one of the Neos is getting involved as he tries to get ahead of Jake Dennis. So it's, it's uh, wee, Dan Tictum's all out of shape as ever. He's a very exciting <laughs> driver, Dan Tictum. And uh, he was there as well. Now, do you see he came to a halt and then carried on, whereas Gunter didn't. Gunter just went straight on. So I think that's why Max Gunter is under investigation. Here are the, the leaders again then. Have a look at Sebastian Buemi in the, in the bottom right. Everyone just slows down. He tries to take evasive action, but clobbers into the back of the Maserati. I think he's got going again, but he's down in 19th place. Sebastian Buemi, frustration for the Swiss. Tictum's got ahead of Fenestras. He's up in a 16th place now but the race leader is still Stoffel van Dorn. De Costa happy to be tucked in behind him at the moment, and Verline sitting there now in 11th place. Another position gain for Verline, and he's got ahead of Jake Dennis. There's the energy remaining, and van Dorn, being the head of the queue, is using a little more than those around him. Not massively, but we're only on lap three. And actually, what is interesting is we, in TV world, have got the power for the energy. The teams actually don't have any knowledge of what energy levels their rivals are at. They only know what their car, well, their two cars have, but they have no idea of what their rivals are at. So um, they, they kind of rely on, on us in TV world to be able to show them that information, and that keeps it really tricky for them to judge just how to pace their drivers. Sam Bird getting stuck in, overtaking Rene Rast into the first corner, and Verline having a bit of a collision there with Nico Muller, forcing his way past Nico Muller and up into 10th place. You see Robin France at the back, the first driver to activate attack mode, but Pascal Verline making that overtake into turn three. So the championship leading German has managed to get him into 10th place now, having started 18th. Really, really strong stuff from, uh, from Pascal Verline. Here's to Costa's radio. Okay, slightly up on energy compared to Stoffel in front. He's saving energy as well, so maximum save. That's Marius Meyer Dietrich on the radio to the Costa saying, you know, keep saving energy at the moment. We're in that early stage, the early peloton stage of the race where everybody is just getting ready to attack later on. Lap four of 31 as they come through the last few corners and out onto the, the start finish straight once more and that'll be lap five of 31 now for Stoffel van Dorn as he comes through with the Costa sitting in behind Mitch Evans in the black and white Jaguar in third place and Bird's on the attack again his next target is Rene Rast in the other sorry Jake Hughes in the other McLaren and he's through Bird into sixth place now and joins that front fight so we've got two DS Penske's two Jaguars and side by side here Gunter's following through and he goes ahead of Rene Rast and now Berline's going to try and get Rast as well Rast is squeezing his compatriot towards the inside had to get out of the throttle there did Pascal Berline and there Gunter's getting repassed as they come up into turn four by Rast he's almost fed into the wall Berline goes to the outside and Mao manages to hold that place for now Verline also losing positions in there is Sergio Sete Camera who got up to 14th place having started a lot further down the order than that great squabbling towards the, the back of the field here and Verline is sort of being aggressive but also tentative at the same time because he knows he's in championship contention watch Soffel attacks interesting 
so Stoffel van Dorn has activated attack mode. So Stoffel van Dorn in second place has activated his attack mode, his first attack mode, and he's activated it for one minute. So, uh, and here's a look at the jump that we've got here. Whoa, Cassidy! Swerving to the outside to sort of have a look around Mitch Evans and hit that huge jump. And here comes the Porsche. Down into the first corner, Verline ahead of Gunter now. Up into ninth place, also into attack mode, goes jean eric Verne from fifth position and Sam Bird. Right, Sam Bird, interestingly, he's the first driver who did go for three minutes. Most others have gone for one minute on this first attack mode. So Sam Bird trying to use the opposite strategy to a lot of his rivals there. Lap six of 31. Antonio Felix da Costa is leading the way. There's chaos in the middle here. Well done, mate. This is nice. Well done. Right. Verline being told that uh, that's very nice and it's all kicking off at the front because Evans is now looking a bit racy. Uh, there's all side by side further back and this is the Mahindras trying to get past Sergio Sete Camera. Roland pulls it off. He gets up into 13th place. Sete Camera down to 14th. The Grassi is 15th. Tictum, Freins, Venestrath, Wemi, and Lot Mortara and Lotter are the last of the runners. Here's Cassidy in fourth. Use 1.4. We think it's 0.5 faster than predicted. So they think, uh, well, here's everybody weaving down the start straight to try and break the toe, I think, or something. But is there going to be a move here into turn one? Stoffel van Dorn looking for the lead of the Epri. Down into the first corner, and he's through. Stoffel van Dorn takes the lead. Second now is to Costa. Evans in third. Da Costa didn't really try very hard to defend there, did he? As we see Gunter having a look down the inside. Gunter's got back ahead of Verline, so that's a move for position there. And Verline now coming under pressure as we head towards turn four from his championship rival, Jake Dennis. But Van Dorn has taken one attack mode. That's when he lost the lead. Side by side further back as Verline and Dennis are getting involved in a kerfuffle around the outside. Gunter's getting squeezed towards the wall, or he's rather he's squeezing Verline towards the wall as they come down the back straight. Evans is now on the attack as well. And Evans is ahead of Da Costa. So Da Costa drops down to third position. Cassidy fourth. Meanwhile, here comes Degrassi around the outside of uh, Nico Muller. There's contact and actually it's Roland and Muller who are fighting and all oh, that Neo sticking his nose up the inside that was Sergio said a camera trying to get involved in the fight as well Benestras has come to a halt at turn four so Benestras is out of the running Cassidy has got ahead of Da Costa as well so Da Costa after leading the race briefly has now dropped all the way back to fourth position Sam Bird has 40 seconds of attack mode remaining and he's going to use it to pass Jake Hughes coming down towards the first corner Bird to the inside Vern is also attacking the Costa. This is race control. We've got a car, drivers left at the exit of turn six. Please obey the flags. So a car has stopped on the exit of turn six. That is Fenestras. And uh, Van Dorn is still leading the way. This is a busy Formula E race. There's a lot going on. I think what's worth noting there is We've got a Fenestras car stationary, car. drivers left at the exit of turn six. Obey the double yellows. Obey the double yellows. Right, there we go. Hopefully those marshals will be able to pull Fenestras backwards quickly. What's quite clear, Jack, is you can see Sam Bird there, that move that he did on the McLaren, that worked because he took three minutes of attack mode. If you only take one minute of attack mode, safety car deployed. Safety cars come out. You Just don't the get the soft history. Again, team Yeah, I cannot go neutral. So the, the, we, we were having a yellow flag because we were hoping that Fenestras would be able to get the car going again because it sounds like a technical problem for him, but he can't get out of neutral, so we have to deploy the safety car in order to clear it away. So. Van Dorn leads, has taken one attack mode. Evans is second, Cassidy third, De Costa fourth, Vernon Bird in fifth and sixth have activated an attack mode as well. And then no one else up the, the front has activated an attack mode just yet. As the uh, Porsche safety car makes its way out onto the circuit. And we have a brief pause. I was going to say it'll bunch the pack up, but it was pretty bunched already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think so. I, I noticed by the way, all has got some wing, wing damage. Copy. Lots of, uh, lots of things to learn from this weekend, mate. I'll come back stronger. Well, there's some encouraging words for uh, Sasha Fenestras from Johan Am, who is his engineer. So. Lap 9 of 31, we're behind the safety car as we clear Sasha Fenestras' car. Here's a look at some of the, the moments at the start of the race. Down towards the first corner, it was four wide in there at one point. They did well to get through there. And then Nato, the first of the red and white cars here, just absolutely plows into the back of Jake Hughes. 
And yeah, what happened with Mortar? I keep forgetting to look at that. He's got front wing damage, yeah. but I'm always too busy looking go. at Nato. He's, ah. he's already damaged the front wing. Look, Mortara, even yeah. before we got there, so I turned one somewhere, that he made contact. Whoa. There's Nato flying free that in his spine, I tell you, when he when he uh, bounces back down. But yeah, so completely misjudged that, Nato. Um, so it must be here Mortara gets the damage there when everyone squeezes through. Bird's going to have a good great view. Oh yeah, good point. Bird's going to have a great view of that moment. Keeps to the outside. Debris flying everywhere and he manages to pick his way through it all. And then this was the run down towards turn four. Oh, that was the Cassidy jump. That would have caught his attention, I tell you. Um, yeah, here, this is Van Dorn taking the lead from Antonio Felix da Costa, who didn't look like he was too bothered to no, defend. No. And, and it's weird, isn't it? Because da Costa's now dropped down to fourth place. Those two cars behind him have got past. This is the replay from on board Van Dorn's car. And, and Van Dorn wasn't even convinced he necessarily wanted the lead either. Yeah, it's sort of a you go, no you go, no you go. One of those, uh, yeah, very, I wonder if it's a tactical move from da Costa yeah, sure. because he's gone, all right, I'm just going to sit in the train here, save some energy and then attack towards the end. Fenster, he's damaged the rear left jack. Look, the rear left wheel is slightly askew, so he has either collided with another car or a wall somewhere. Yeah, right. Lap 9 of 31, still behind the safety car here. And now the marshals will head out and hoist Tommaso Volpe's car away. A shape of Fenestras, the unluckiest man so far this season. In fact, both uh, Nissans are now out of the race. They're the only two retirements, but Fenestraz has been super unlucky this season. Um, there are the attack modes remaining. So if you have four minutes left, you've not activated any at all. If you have less than that, that's how much you have remaining in your one remaining activation. And that's when you get to run at 350 kilowatts of power instead of 300 kilowatts of power. I, I, I'm surprised nobody's gone for two and two, to be honest, because with one minute, you're not getting back around to the start finish train to get yeah. the move into turn one. Yeah. Whereas if you get, if you take two minutes, you, you've got that chance down this long straight. So um, I, I want, I'll be interested to see what people like Evans and Cassidy and Da Costa, who are sitting right behind Van Dorn, what their plan is, because they have got the option still. Applause from the crowd as the cars come down the, the start finish straight. Great to see so many people. Sao Paulo this weekend. Well, there's a lot of people in Sao Paulo every weekend. Yeah. The fourth most popular city in the world. 24 to go. That's a massive amount we can save compared to everyone else. We've got a very efficient car. I know it's damaged. Uh, That's Connor Somerville, Sebastian Buemi's race engineer. Just trying to chirp him up a bit, you know. He's down in 18th place and they're saying, ah, we've got a, a long way to go. You can hear the crowd through the concrete box windows here. It's amazing. They uh, really, really fight into it. Down at turn one as well. Look at that. Um, safety car is really. They're going quite slowly, aren't they? They're trying to just get that Fenestras car out of the way quickly so we get lots of green flag laps. Lap 10 of 31 in the Sao Paulo E Prix. And we're behind the safety car while they clear away. Uh, Bruno Carrera on the on the right-hand side, the driver of the, the safety car. And they are just clearing away Sasha Fenestraz's car down at turns four, five. This might be potentially the last lap behind the safety car because last we saw they were about to clear Fenestraz's uh, car and it looks as though it's gone, hasn't it, at the back there? No, what? no, no, we're coming up to turn oh, yeah, four. We're coming up to it now, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how the, how the progress is going. But it could be that we go racing again fairly swiftly yeah there we go so the car's been hoisted away and it's got to go through that gap once the whole field has come through so maybe end of this lap it's up to scott elkins the uh, race director I, I, I think it i think we'll, we'll be clear at the end of this lap we're nearly there aren't we and uh once they get past this th there's the front wing i was talking about a roland's car yeah. the, the damage it's quite close to actually the front tire isn't it if he bounces over the curve it's quite close to to touching the front right tyre. Van Dorn leading, Evans second. This is what happened to Sebastian Buemi. He's the green car just coming to the left-hander now and clobbers into the back of Max Gunter. And oh, 
Dan Tickton having to take serious evasive action further back from that. It was similar to what happened to Freins in Mexico yeah. where he ended up with a broken hand. Watch this. So what? Somebody in front of Gunther slows down, clearly. Oof. He just, yeah, didn't realize how much slower the cars are probably going. Yeah. Crikey. Sylvain so, Felipe uh, surprised by that one. Uh, lights still on on the safety cars. They haven't quite managed to, to clear it away yet, Fenestraz's car. He and Nato out of the race. The two Nissans. But Van Dorn is leading. Evans second, Cassidy third, De Costa fourth, Vern in fifth, Bird is up into sixth. I mean, you'd have to say it's that top six, I think, that are going to be fighting for the win. I'm not convinced the McLarens have the efficiency to really get involved in the fight, and they're seventh and eighth, but I can see any of that top six winning. I, I agree, I agree. I mean, we saw Cassidy, didn't we, in India, being right up behind Byrne, that their car using the same powertrain as Jaguar. So you've got three Jaguar powertrains in the top six, and all three of them got very good efficiency. Can you give any comparison in terms of energy? Uh, no, negative. Not right now. Negative. So Verline asking, do we know what's happening in, with anyone else in terms of energy? Well, Carl Wilson-Clark saying no, because we haven't put it on the telly. We're keeping it a secret, thank yeah, you exactly. very much. It's for us to know and you to find out, Pascal. Safety car will be in this lap. There you can see the progress made. Uh, eight places gained for Pascal Verline. He's having a very, very nice ride. Mortara down 15 places, and he really wanted to score some points did uh, Eduardo Mortara but it's going to be tough for him down in 19th position right safety car will pick the pace up now Van Dorn when will he decide to go for it he's coming into turn seven 11 corners on this circuit the field backed up behind him waiting coming down towards the kink at turn nine Oh, I thought he was going, but he's still just waiting, Van Dorn. I think he'll wait for just before the last corner. So the 90-degree left-hander of turn... There he goes. Coming into the left-hander of turn 10. He's got a nice little restart there. Stoffel Van Dorn through the final turn, out across the line. Energy-wise, Van Dorn isn't in a great place. He's 3%, well, 2% less than Evans. So Van Dorn across the line, racing back underway in Sao Paulo, on the run down towards the first corner, and Van Dorn is leading. Evans is second, third is Cassidy, Gunther is uh, defending from Verline. Has Verline got quite a bit of damage to the front of the car? I might, I might be wrong, but it looks as though there was a bit of damage to the front of Verline. Look at him as he comes through here. I think maybe I made it up. Lap 12 of 31. Here's Evans' radio. Copy. 2%, solid 2% up on Van Dorn. Cassidy behind, same energy. Cars behind, now 1% down. I.e. Evans is looking in a pretty strong position at the moment. I think that's what Joseph Rocker, his race engineer, is basically suggesting. Yeah, but don't forget, Van Dorn's the only one of those lead cars who's used his attack mode. And when you use attack mode, you use up a bit more energy. So there'll be a slight uh, difference. Now Da Costa has gone past. So Da Costa now back ahead of Cassidy. And uh, that was a place he kind of gave up quite easily there. But maybe now a bit of reassurance that they're OK on energy. Having seen the numbers, he's now getting going again. Scan the QR code to vote for your driver of the race later on today. We have 2% more than Stoffel, same as Mitch, and 1% more than Da Costa. And that's Cassidy getting told about his energy status as well. Across the line we go to start lap 13 of 31. We'll probably have some added laps as well at the end of this because of the safety car intervention. Here's side by side for second place, Da Costa to the inside. And Da Costa up into second spot ahead of Mitch Evans, who drops down to third. So Da Costa lost a couple of places and is now deciding to try and get them back. It's all kicking off here down at turn three. That is Roland getting involved. Uh, Dennis is still in that fight. Verline hasn't made much progress. Da Costa's right behind Stoffel Van Dorn now for the lead. And here comes Cass. Cassidy to the inside, forces his way past Mitch Evans. The two Kiwis squabbling over the final podium position. And now he uh, has dropped, Evans has dropped down a couple of places. Gunter gets a five second time penalty for not following the race director's instructions. That was when he ran wide at turn one. Cassidy looking back to the inside of Da Costa, coming up into turn seven. 
I'm surprised Van Dorn's not giving up the lead, to be honest. Yeah. Because you, you clearly are saving more energy by being in the slipstream. And it's still early in the race. We're not, we're not even at half distance. And I suspect there'll be some ad laps added as well for the safety car. So uh, Van Dorn should really give up the lead, I think, on this next lap to just try and get in the train a bit more. Out over the start, finish straight once more. Here's Evans Radio. I've got a lot of energy, but need to be smart. Evans saying, I've got a lot of energy, but I need to be smart. And here comes Cassidy for the lead. Nick Cassidy hits the front. And then side-by-side -side action further back, because that's Gunter on the attack with the second of the McLarens of Rene Rast. And Verline's in the middle of all that, and that needs to be caught out. And he tries to not be caught out as Evans. Verline nearly getting hit there by Dennis. I think he did. I think Dennis went into the back of Verline. The top two in the championship came together. And where has that left Verline? Meanwhile, it's about a million for the lead up at the front. Van Dorn in the lead. Second is now Cassidy, and third is now Evans. Around the outside to try and get past the McLarens goes Max Gunter. Might have got ahead of Rene Rast. Verlan, I think, has survived all of that and is still in 10th place. But Dennis is down to 20th. Maybe another race where Dennis doesn't score. He's out of the race, Jake Dennis. Lap 14 of 31. Van Dorn leading. Cassidy second. Evans third. Da Costa fourth. Vern fifth, but not even a half race distance. This is wild. And there is there Dennis is. out. Jake Dennis out of the race. Van Dorn in the lead. Cassidy second. So Van Dorn, he keeps like losing the lead, but then taking it again. It's, it is because he gave it up so easily on the start finish straight last time round. Let's watch this here. Because this is there, there. Again, he's backed out of it earlier than Cassidy. Oh, but they're all, they're all funny. But nobody <laughs> wants the lead, Jack. Nobody <laughs> wants the lead. They're all just okay, attention all teams, attention off. all teams. This is race control. We have a car drivers left. Car drivers left. Just after turn three. Please obey the flags. Please obey the flags. Scott Elkins, the race director. So, yeah, no one wants to be in the lead of this race because it is you're losing so much energy. But Cassidy now decides he does. Cassidy in the envision goes to the front of the field. Looking to win his second Formula E race. Everybody taking a base of action at turns four and five. And then back out onto the back straight towards turn seven. So Cassidy leading. Van Dorn second, DaCosta third. I don't know why I keep reading out the order because it's going to change again. DaCosta to the inside of Van Dorn. Just look at the tower on the left, everybody. I won't, I won't bother telling yeah. you. Yeah. Well, listen, also, though, the, uh, in, in that leading group, there's a bunch of drivers who haven't yet taken their attack loads. I saw Roland did it, but he went across the runoff area, Jack. Yeah. Why? and then went into the attack mode. And I think the stewards might have a look at that because I didn't see him stop either, which is what we've seen Gunther get a penalty for. So Cassidy is leading in the green in vision. Down towards turn one. They're starting to make a bit of a gap back now behind Bird, and the safety car's out again. Safety car deployed again. There's a lot of debris on track as well, to be honest. And it's one of those things where there's so much carbon fiber debris out there. I always feel a bit uncomfortable with punctures. Copy, prepare scenario three. We're three percent up on Van Dorn. So, Nick Cassidy leading, the safety car out again in Sao Paulo. Oh, this is a lot, this race, isn't it? <laughs> Cassidy then, there's the attack modes remaining. Here's a look at uh, the run down towards the first corner. This is Cassidy going ahead of the Porsche and ahead of Van Dorn. And then through goes Evans as well to get Antonio Felix da Costa also. So da Costa suddenly goes from second down to fourth. And then Cassidy activated his attack mode. So that's why he suddenly got back to the front. That was Dennis having the contact with Verline. Didn't look like a big enough hit to, oh. to put Dennis out, to be honest. But it, but it, it must oh. have been, unless he had a technical. But he's out of the race, Jake Dennis, and out of the car at least. But he was classified the last finisher in the last two races. And now he's out of the race here, and it's all kind of falling apart this year for Jake Dennis after such a strong start to the season. Very frustrated. But you're right, it didn't seem like a very heavy bit of contact there. I don't know if it's just, it was just enough at the wrong angle to do damage to the, the, the steering arm, but yeah, I mean, it looked, it was a bit of a nudge, but I mean, We've seen, we've seen much more bumping and banging this year, haven't we? On top of it, you have one attack. Uh, Mitch has none. Uh, 
yeah, so that's um, Cassidy being told he's got one attack mode uh, to use. Evans has two attack modes to use. Here we go, on board with Dennis. Into turns one and two. Through the right, through the left. Unless it's broken here. But oh, he's, he's all... I wonder if he's... I wonder if the rear is broken, because he was so loose at this point also. And he's taking evasive action, and he's... I'm just trying to see where the damage on that car is for Jake Dennis. It's a very, very strange one indeed, and a frustrating one for Roger Griffiths. Lap 17 of 31 in the sixth round of the ABB FIA Formula e World Championship. We are having a carnival of motor racing in Sao Paulo at the moment because this is just wild stuff. Myself and Karun Chandok with you for the second half of this race as well, which if it's anything like the first half, it's going to be a bit mad. And any of the top six can win this race. Yeah. They, they've all got pretty similar amounts of energy. They've all got similar amounts of pace, uh, except for Van Dorn, who seems to have less than others. But um, yeah, there's a, you can see see the energy graphic on your left hand side there. Van Dorn's the outlier in that top seven. I don't think Jay Hughes has got the speed this weekend to win, but you'd have to say that any of the others in the top six can do it. Here's Cassidy's radio. So Nick, no attack Flamingo, yeah? No attack Flamingo. Let's consider it. Um, no attack Flamingo. I mean, that's an interesting... Uh, the teams all use various bits of yeah. code, but that's an interesting one. There, you can see Verline's car, by the way, in the train. There's a bit of damage there on the right-hand side just dragging along the floor. So he's got some damage to the side, which is presumably where Dennis made contact with him. Look at that a graphic there, Jack. There's so many drivers who've not even taken one okay, of their attack managers, This so, is race uh, control. This safety car right now is for picking up a number of pieces of debris around the track. We're getting reports from everyone, so that's why we're doing this, is trying to clean the track up a little bit. Just be aware. Okay, yeah. so that's why, even though Dennis's car is... Uh, it's cleared. The safety car is going to do another lap while they clean up some more debris. And this will then get added. We will get added laps at the at the end of this race also. Uh, here's a look at Dan Tickfin. What's he been up to then in the Neo 333? On the run down towards the first corner. Oh, sends it. Ah, that's the Dennis damage. So Tickfin has cleaned out Dennis's right rear. Dennis can't control the car. Hits Verline and that's why he parks up. That's my, you know, Miss Marvel theory. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's just hard to see what the damage was, isn't it? Yeah. I think car. it was the right rear suspension. I, I is my guess from where Tictum yeah hit him down at turn one. There you can see the the Tietu River on the left hand side that eventually joins the Parana River and then actually ends up going to Iguazu Falls, the the huge waterfall that's in between Brazil and Argentina. Wow. And near Paraguay, that's sort of uh, where those those three rivers meet. Wonderful part of the world. Fun fact. Uh. Yeah, there you go. I'm all about my rivers. That's my only river fact I've got for you uh, today. Lap 18 of 31. Cassidy leading to Costa second. Van Dorn third. So Bird's made up. Degrassi's up into 12th place. He's made up 10 positions. There's the view back from the from the safety car. There's, there's a lot coming in this race, I feel. There's a safety car is going to be in on this lap, so uh, we've, we've got nearly half distance to go, and it, it feels like it's going to be a busy half race coming up. And I think the team principals know it as well. That's Fred Bertrand, the, the boss of Degrassi. That's uh, Thomas Beermeyer, the boss of the APT team. Well, the boss of the Fred Bertrand, the boss of the Mahindra team, rather than the boss of Degrassi. I don't think anyone's the boss of Degrassi. <laughs> so. They come down towards the final couple of corners. Roland's front wing has gone completely missing now. Yeah. Right, green flag. When will Cassidy floor the throttle and get racing back underway in Sao Paulo? Now is the answer. Just coming through turn nine. De Costa's stuck with him relatively well. Read that one quite nicely, did the Portuguese. As they come through the final corner. Across the line to start lap 19 of 31. Cassidy leading, De Costa second. Van Dorn in third is the man with the least energy of the front runners. Evans arguably has the most. There's defensive work going on further back. 
with uh, the McLaren of Hughes defending a little, and there goes Cassidy through attack mode, and Vern. So De Costa is back to the lead. Uh, sorry, Van Dorn, I should say. Cassidy and Van Dorn have both decided to use all of their attack modes, and immediately they're side by side and back ahead of Bird. So Van Dorn gets back ahead of Bird on the run up into turn four. De Costa leading the way. Evans in second. Cassidy is in third position. Bird is fourth. Van Dorn is fifth. Bird is sixth. As they come down the back straight now towards turn seven, here's De Costa's radio. Okay, really use your energy now. Use your energy. Interesting. Antonio Felix De Costa just being told, use the energy now. So they're asking him to push hard to make some sort of a gap and take attack mode. So, you know, he hasn't used any of his attack modes and neither has Mitch Evans right behind him in the Jaguar. So those two drivers are going to be pushing on. But watch this car here, the fifth place man, Stoffel van Dorn, as well as Nick Cassidy, because Cassidy in second and third place has got more power. He's got 50 kilowatts more power. And he's very close, isn't he, to the back of Mitch Evans. The two DS Penske swap places. Van Dorn gets ahead of Vern because he's in attack mode. De Costa goes through attack mode now, as does Mitch Evans. So the top two take attack mode. Cassidy then is back up into the lead of the race, but immediately the attack is on coming from Mitch Evans as he tries to get ahead of Van Dorn in towards turn four, five, and six, and he does it. So Evans activates attack mode and then is straight back up into third position. We're on board with the Jaguar TCS racer now. He's behind De Costa in the Porsche and Cassidy, the race leader. Race leader. Right, so the top four all using attack mode there, which is why we can see Sean Eric Byrne in fifth place, just dropping back a little bit. He's still got three minutes to go of his, which he could use at a later point in this race. <laughs> there's, a, there's a fascinating battle up front. Plan A1, we don't go crazy. Plan A1. Well, we don't go crazy, but it's taking the lead of the race, Mitch Evans. So Evans gets ahead of Cassidy and back up to the front of the field. Someone after this race, uh, it's not going to be me, I can tell you that, is going to look through and find out how many lead changes there were in this, in this motor race, and the number's going to be absurd. Uh, down towards the right-hander of uh, Turn 1, lap 21 of 31. Van, Van Dorn's got to start saving energy here, because he, he's... Oh, this is Jorik Byrne, and one of the McLaren's running around going for... Half a percent up on Cassidy on TV. Right, so Rast has gone for a minute of attack mode. He's got his teammate Jake Hughes in front of him. Are they going to swap the two McLarens? Well, they have it there. So he stays back. Gunther's all over the back of him here. Ooh, this is interesting. Oh. Two of the favourites, De Costa and Evans, under investigation for overtaking on the yellows. Oh, and there was uh, Mortara getting spun into the into the wall. Oh, was that? Yeah, that is Mortara yep. getting spun into the wall. So he's back down into 19th place. I thought he always was in 19th place, but. De Costa and Evans then, under investigation for overtaking under yellow flags. The same is true of Rast and Verline. So we'll see what happens there. Lap 21 of 31. Here's Verline. He's got two minutes 20 remaining. Two minutes 20 remaining. Evans leading. Cassidy second. De Costa third. Van Dorn fourth. Bird is fifth. Verline is up into sixth place. So Pascal Verlein is making his way through the field now and is up behind Sam Bird. He's got ahead of jean eric Verne and there's Bird activating his uh, attack mode. And that uh, Verlein hasn't used any attack modes yet. And he started 18th. Yeah. That, he's up to fifth, having started 18th. Pascal Verlein could set a new Formula E record here by winning from 18th place. He's, he's not out of this fight, Jack. Certainly not. Well, no, no one is. I still think we've got a shot, Karun, at winning this one. Uh, lap 22 of 31. Evans is out of his attack mode. Cassidy in second place has used all of his. That's Antonio Felix da Costa, race winner last time out in Cape Town. Now running in third spot here in the Tag Heuer Porsche. Van Dorn is dropping off a little. We're getting a bit spread out now as we get into the second half of this race because what you what you reaped in the first half of the race, you're beginning to sow, as it were, in the, in the second half of the race, to use a fairly clunky analogy. Yeah, Van, Van Dorn, he's got to start saving energy now, because otherwise, at the end, he's going to have nothing left to fight with. So he's got to use his middle sort of lull and 
any in the race. He's really much of a lull, but this middle part of the race is just trying to stabilize his energy situation before attacking towards the end. Does Berline go for attack more? One V98. The Costa needs to go again, right? Costa did. Yeah, so De Costa has been through his attack mode. Nick Cassidy has made seven overtakes so far. So has Bird, so has Verline, so has Lucas de Grassi. The record for most Formula E uh, lead changes is eight in Rome in 2021. That's 23 of 31. Evans is leading, Cassidy second, Van Dorn third, De Costa fourth. But how long is that true for? De Costa's looking a bit racy here to try and get ahead of Van Dorn. He's got attack mode down the... Well, he might be out of it by the time they get to the start finish straight here. So, De Costa and Van Dorn fighting over position. It's Evans who's at the front in the black and white Jaguar, followed by the green car of Cassidy. De Costa's looking a bit impatient here. I think he wants to get ahead of Van Dorn ASAP. Yeah, I think he could see the gap opening up. You know, Van Dorn's obviously trying to save energy and just, just back things up a little bit. But the gap has opened up there. Van Dorn now a second and a half behind Cassidy, and he's dropped out of the toe. So here he is, Van Dorn's backed out of it, and Da Costa's got through. Cassidy had a little look at Evans, who defended the inside line. So Da Costa now third. Okay, let's keep moving, Antonio. Keep moving, Antonio. Attack mode for Evans. So Cassidy now in the lead. Evans up into second place, Da Costa in third. Fourth is Van Dorn, fifth is Pascal Verlein. Verlein still yet to use either of his attack modes. Right, so the team telling Verline to go with the Costa, so they're, they're pushing him along, saying, look, use a bit more energy if you have to, to get ahead of Van Dorn. They recognize Van Dorn needs to go slower at this point to save some energy, and they don't want Verline to be stuck in that train. That 24 of 31. Cassidy, Evans, the Costa, Van Dorn, Verline, the top five. Verd's uh, got a lot of energy in seventh place. Look, he's probably got the most of the of the front runners, but you end up at this point getting uh, getting into that zone of okay, you've got a load of energy, but you're seventh. What can you do with it? And at what point do you kind of go for it? Yeah, and actually Van Dorn's done a pretty good job here, hasn't he? He's he's now recovered it enough, so he's only a little bit down compared to other people. He's, he's almost equal with Verline. So oh, oh lock up there for the Costa. He's gone straight and stopped and go. So he that. That is going to cost him. De Costa's race is gone. De Costa's race, while he was fighting for the win, has now slipped away. He's gone from third all the way down to sixth, seventh position. Real frustration for De Costa as he locks up at the first corner. Give me one or two more laps. Right, so Verline asking for one or two more laps before he takes attack mode. And. Uh, that's, this is a really interesting race for him here because he's got to take four minutes of attack mode. Oh, just locks the right front. And then the rules are you have to come to a halt here and then get going again, which he did. So followed the rules or whatever, but still he's dropped down to seventh position. And Cassidy's got a nice little lead now. Out over the start, finish straight to start lap 26. And Cassidy's lead is 1.2 seconds over Mitch Evans in second place. And it's 1.3 back to Stoffel Van Dorn in third. Jack in the top 11. OK, let's invest now, invest now, push into attack, take attack, take attack, strat three, strat three. So Verline's going to take attack mode from fourth place. Here he comes. Yeah, and he is the last driver in the top 11 to take attack mode. All the others have used both. So, uh... He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gone for three minutes straight away. So he's gonna use a bunch of power now to get ahead of these three cars. He's got to do it. I think before he runs out of attack mode, he's got to get ahead of these three cars. But do they swap the two Porsches because he's dropped behind Da Costa now? I don't know if Da Costa will have much to fight with, to be honest, because we've got uh, Da Costa rear view on the left, Pascal forward facing on the on the right as they come up towards turn seven. He's got three minutes of extra power here, Pascal Verline, so he should be able to breeze past down the start, finish straight, and he's he's in the queue here for a, for a strong points finish. After starting 18th on the grid, this is quite a remarkable drive from Pascal Verline. The championship leader looking to extend his championship lead. Cassidy's doing a cracking job up front, he's broken the gap now, 1.2 seconds. Can I pass? 
expect energy coming back to you, Stanway. There comes Verlein looking to the inside. He has got damage to the to the to the nose of that car. I wasn't making it up earlier on, but the two Porsches, nose to tail. Verlein asking, can I pass? Now up the back straight. To Costa on the power a little earlier. Here they come down towards turns four, five, and six. And he's a little bit too far back at the moment. He's gained 11 places in this race so far, Pascal Verlein. He's not making up the ground though, is he? Using this attack mode, and that first four, that bunch is now quite spread out. And the, be the more you spread out, the benefit of the slipstream just starts to go away, of course. So uh, the drivers really need to be within three, four tenths to, to pick up the massive energy benefit with the tow, but um, yeah, I mean, De Costa's got a minute left, so he'll still get the start finish straight. Whether that's enough to get ahead of De Costa, we'll see. They're both right up behind Sam Bird, who's running in fifth place, and then jean eric Verne in fourth, and the top three have broken away a little bit at the moment. Hold position, save energy behind. Okay, that's interesting. So Verlein being told to hold position behind your teammate De Costa, save energy behind him. Is he going to activate? No, he can't activate his next attack mode on this lap. So I wonder if their target is sort of fourth position, as it were, because that's that's doable with uh, the, the second of the black and gold DS Cheetahs. Bird in the black and white Jaguar is starting to look racy as well. There, looking for a strong performance after not scoring in the last two races. Fairline, who is the second Porsche behind you, is in attack with two minutes to go. The Jaguar powertrain is working well here, isn't it? They've got three cars in the top five, including first and second. That's this right. is Sam Bird all over the back of jean eric Bird. Left-hander of turn 10, then right again at 11. Got saving a lot. Okay, copy, copy. Added laps, four. So we've got seven laps to go now in the Sao Paulo e -Prix. And here comes Bird. Bird on jean eric Verne into turn one, and he's through. Sam Bird now up into fourth place in the Jaguar. Of race for neutralization. Confirm, confirm, attack mode, attack mode now. Verline takes attack mode and he comes out behind the McLaren. He should be able to breeze back past Hughes fairly easily with that extra power. And now Verline has got to try and close that gap to the Cure cars ahead that are headed by Sam Bird. Cassidy and Evans, the gap is less than a second between them. Down the back straight towards turn seven. So Cassidy and Evans, then a gap. Back to Van Dorn, who's actually backing into Bird now. Or Bird's catching Van Dorn, which either way you want to look at it. But the battle for the final podium position is going to be very much on pretty imminently. Yeah, it's not worked out for Berlin, has it? He's dropped back a long way from the Costa. Cassidy versus Evans, the two Kiwis up at the front. They know each other extremely well, have raced each other for a long time. And that's going to be a good battle there. Now two and a half seconds, Jack, ahead of Van Dorn. So Sam Bird, who we're riding on forward, needs to get past Van Dorn pretty quickly, as he does now, into turn one. If he, if he gets a move on, it will happen quickly. <laughs> um, he could maybe get himself into this fight. But I, I now increasingly think the battle for the win is between just Cassidy and Evans. It looks like it, doesn't it? The gap between them is two and a half seconds. Cassidy out in front, but now the Jaguars are running second and third at the moment. Six laps to go in Sao Paulo. 2% more energy than Mitch and Cassidy in front. You'll catch them. Well, Bird, Bird being told by his engineer, you'll catch the battle for the lead. Well, I mean, 2% is the best part of the lap. It's probably, well, it's about two-thirds of the lap around here so um, he, he might well do but he'll have to get a move on Evans is looking racy though I think Cassidy's led this race for a long time hasn't he he's been yeah. the one punching the hole in the air and using up more energy as, as a result I wonder if he'll just sort of engineer a swap here and let let Mitch through down towards turn one Cassidy leading he doesn't sitting in behind 
Bird closing in on the two of them. Bird gave much energy, Sam. N00. So he, Cassidy wants to know how much energy Bird has in third place. He's made nine overtakes so far today, Sam Bird. And he was a second and a half faster than Cassidy in the last lap. You know when I said the battle for the win is between the first two? Yeah. Uh, I was wrong. Because uh, it's kind of how Formula E works, I isn't know. it? You go, oh, I think this is going to happen. No. Nope. How much lap time is that? He will get to us? Yes or no? Yes. And that's Robert Sattler, the uh, engineer for Cassidy, saying, yep, Bird will catch you up. And, and he almost has already. The two Jaguars are going to be nose to tail on the circuit. And then it's the two DS Penske's behind in the fight for fourth and fifth. We had a little lull in the middle of this race. And now it is all kicking off at the end. It says we're on lap 31 of 31. But when we come across the line now, we will have the four added laps to go. So across the line we go, four laps remaining in the Sao Paulo E Prix, and it's three for the lead. Nick Cassidy, Mitch Evans, and Sam Bird, and Evans goes to the inside, and Evans takes the lead, does he? Gets it stopped, has a big slide, but it's through, and that allows Bird to join the fight, coming into turn three. Wow, all three of them, of course, with identical Jaguar powertrains, so this is, uh, this is a fascinating battle up the front, because they, they all know, actually, what, where they're all, each other are at with energy you know there's a lot of information sharing going on there so um yeah this is this is gonna leave us but bird in the pouncy i think he's got to clear cassidy quickly hasn't he yeah good job good job sam will attack him now we'll see what happens now da costa's on a bit of a charge he's got ahead of the first of the ds penskis of stoffel van door Vern somehow is ahead of van door well Van Dorn spent all that energy leading the e -Prix in the early stages. We'll have three laps to go at the end of this one. Nick Cassidy being hunted by Sam Bird there behind us. Cassidy took Bird's seat when Bird went to Jaguar. Let's get him. Simple message from Phil Ingram. Let's get him down towards turn one. Are we going to be having a Jaguar 1-2 with three laps to go? A little too far back at the moment, but here comes Da Costa. Da Costa's ahead of... Burn now. So Antonio Felix da Costa up into fourth position. Yeah, Burn I mean, taking a wide line through three to try and get the run out, but he's not quite close enough still. We've got these packs, haven't we? We've got the top three, then we've got four, fifth, six, and then another four cars, and they've, they've sort of bunched up here for these final few laps of the E3. But Bird's got to get ahead. He's got 2% more than Cassidy. He's got to do it on this lap. If he wants to take the fight to Evans, and I think he can because he's also got 2% more than Evans has. So as soon as Evans has gone in the lead, you know, he, it's, it's, it's more challenging for him. So how will Jaguar play this as well? That'll be interesting. If Bird does yeah. get ahead, are they free to race for the win? Bird is, a, is ahead in the championship standings. It's too early to be making decisions based on that, I'm sure, but... A very, very interesting final couple of laps. That man, James Barkley, maybe might have a bit of a decision to make, but a ve fairly pleasant decision to have to make. Across the line we go, penultimate lap of the Sao Paulo E Prix. Like unless it's absolutely on. Right, sure so, yeah, saying. they're basically saying to him, don't make a risky move, only do it if the move is absolutely on. Right. So they're telling tell him, what were you saying before, Jack, about team orders? You're not saying hold position, they're just saying don't take a risk. Yeah. He's got two more percent than Cassidy, but remember how much of an energy advantage Cassidy had in Hyderabad behind jean eric Verne and couldn't get the move made there. That's right. Bird has got two percent more energy than Cassidy and Evans. Evans has got five percent remaining. We're in for another crescendo in a Formula E race. Yes, I have L2. And he, they're just checking got they've got... percent more than both the cars in front. Bring it home. Two laps to go. Bird's made up seven places over the course of this E Prix. He had a really difficult year last year, but... Ah, this is the commentator's curse. I can feel it coming already, but it's been a strong, strong performance here today from Sam Bird. Can he get Cassidy for second place? We've got one more lap to go. Evans through the final corner. He... It's looking for his seventh victory in Formula E.
down the start finish straight in towards turn one. Cassidy, I don't think, has given up on this race yet either. There's defending further back from DaCosta. DaCosta and Verna going wheel to wheel into the first corner. Target's pretty much flat out, mate. Nothing I can do now. So the target is now flat out. So Bird's got the energy, but he can't use it because everybody, because there isn't enough time left. But look how racy Cassidy's going. He sat behind Jean-Eric Byrne. He settled for second place in Hyderabad, did the Kiwi. He doesn't want to settle here this afternoon in Sao Paulo. He wants that win. He's got one more chance, Jack, coming up into turn seven. This is, I think, Cassidy's last chance to get the move done. Evans goes super defensive into the right-hander. Holds the place, holds the lead. Two more corners to go for Mitch Evans. Cassidy's right there. It's three for the lead with two turns to go in round six of the Formula E World Championship. And Cassidy sends it to the outside, coming into turn 10. It's bold, it's ambitious, and it doesn't come off unless he thinks about it in the final corner. It crossed his mind. He doesn't do it. The checkered flag falls. Evans wins in Sao Paulo. Magnificent race, magnificent win for Jaguar. It's a one, two, three for Jaguar powertrains. They've had a tough start to the season, but they're very much back on the top. Yes! Come on! Yes! Yes! Superb, Superb drive from, from Mitch Evans. Evans. Waves with his Jaguar teammate Sam Bird. Despite their collision in Hyderabad, they get on pretty well. But it is Evans, Evans who takes the victory. victory. Cassidy second, third for Bird. Cassidy, oh, he, was, he was going for it, wasn't he, in those, uh, in those closing stages as Evans makes his way down the back straight now and uh, almost grinding to a halt here, Mitch Evans. So we'll see if we can have a word with Mitch Evans. He's, he's slowing, so I hope he doesn't have a, a technical issue. I'm going to go to P0. If he doesn't respond to going to push the hand Okay, well, we'll, yes, we'll leave Evans for now because I think he's having some technical issues. <laughs> Evans is ground to hold, though. When he gets going again, we'll, we'll try and have a chat with him. He's just repowered the car. The lights come on, yep. and away he goes. And uh, as he pulls away, we will now... Oh. He's, still He's still struggling, struggling though. though. This is extraordinary. The end. So there was a point and Buemi's struggling as well. Uh, oh, sorry, Cassidy's Cassidy. struggling as well. So the first and second finishers are uh, struggling to get to the podium. And they're both Jaguar powertrains. And they're both conked out just after the just after the checkered flag. Well, at least they were running when it mattered. Yeah. First, second, and third for them as powertrains. That's an amazing result. Yeah. So Mitch Evans takes the victory. Cassidy second, Sam Bird third, Da Costa fourth, Vern fifth. Remarkable, remarkable race in Sao Paulo. The celebrations continuing in the in the Jaguar garage, and it's it'll feel like such redemption for them, won't it? The Jaguar team had a third place in Diria with Sam Bird. That's their only podium finish of the season, and they've been so strong. To me. I've, I've felt like they have the strongest all-round package, right? Maybe Porsche are quicker in the races, although not today. But in terms of one lap and... OK, here's, here's a look at Cassidy the last few corners, Karun. He was, he was going for it. Yeah, he was. I mean, he, he, he had a little bit more energy than Mitch. And this is where he went for the move around the outside. Oh. It was absolutely the right thing to do. Have a, have a go around here. Mitch very fairly defended the inside. Cassidy had another little sniff. But uh, it wasn't quite enough. But super, super fair, clean, good racing. Antonio Felix da Costa back in the garage. And uh, they're, all, they're all good. It started second on the grid, fourth. He'll be disappointed, da Costa. 
mention the no further action. But, uh, and there is no further action with the Da Costa and Evans stuff with the overtaking under yellows and all of that investigation that went on earlier on. So those results will, uh, will stand. And they're all very, yeah, good points is the message to Da Costa. Fourth place for him. We'll bring you the championship standings uh, in a few moments. So there's Phil Charles, who's the... Uh, oh, they've, got, they've got him going. Evans is... Uh, oh, finally Evans is so going. whatever instructions they gave him, he's finally managed to get it going again. There's Bird having a bit of a smile and a laugh as Evans makes his way back to the pit lane. And so we will hear from him in a few moments' time down in the pit lane with Nicky. And that was the uh, the celebration as they uh, came across the line for the, from the fans. Half a second, Jack, for the top three. <laughs> yeah. Half a second for three cars. That's brilliant. And they were all pushing on that last lap. Bird was in it. You know, they were all pushing hard because Bird had more energy. Yeah. He had energy to spare, frankly. Um, we, we sort of... You know, he'll be slightly annoyed about it because he could have pushed hard early on, although looking at his face, he doesn't seem annoyed about anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I think... Uh, Started in 10th place, pats the car like a horse. Well, as if the car were a horse. He didn't pat it like a horse would pat the car. But Evans climbs out of his Jaguar. And it is a win for Mitch Evans. Now, it's not going to launch him up into title contention or anything like that. He will... Uh, go up to 39 points if my quick maths is accurate so he's still going to be more than 40 points back from Pascal Verlein in the championship lead but just a little step in the right direction and Jaguar managed to execute the the race Bird will think he got the fastest lap of the race he'll think he could have won because they could have used that energy earlier etc etc but it's still a really solid result. And a Jaguar racing. One, two, three. They, they, they finally delivered on all the promise we've seen this whole season. Yeah. They, you know, they, they've been threatening to, to win races and take podiums, but they've just, for a variety of reasons, not capitalized on that speed. And, uh, you know, all, all of those, you know, girls and boys who work in the pit garage, they've been slogging away with very little reward this season, frankly. So, um, yeah, very, very pleased for, the, for that whole team. Sam Bird then finishing third, just half a second back from the race winner, Mitch Evans. Look how close they all were there on the final lap. I wasn't expecting, actually. I wasn't expecting Cassidy to come back at Evans. I thought once Evans got ahead, I thought that was that job done. But uh, Cassidy came back and, and looked like he was going to give him a bit of a, a race for the win. I think that was Cassidy we just saw in the background going past. So he managed to get his car going again. And as I say, yeah, there was the, the collision in Hyderabad and they are teammates. But they do have a, a, you know, perfectly acceptable relationship, Evans and yeah. Evans and Birds. No, absolutely. They, they, they get on. You often see them having meals together. and They know, arrive. They come to the come track together. They leave yeah. together. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, uh, listen, they're both professionals. They're both good drivers, experienced drivers. who have been around the sport now for a very long time. And, uh, you know, they, they both want to win, but they're also uh, pragmatic, normal guys. Yeah. 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 Some bird having a bit of a debrief. The cameramen in the background are filming the new, the next series of Formula e Unplugged, the behind-the-scenes documentary that uh, follows these drivers. Are you going to be in it? I do a little bit of a talking head kind of stuff, giving my opinion. Here's a look at the results after round six of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. The top three covered by half a second. Evans, Cassidy and Bird, the first time two New Zealanders have been on the podium together in Formula E. Antonio Felix da Costa finishing fourth. Vern fifth, Van Dorn starting on pole, finished sixth. So that means the last nine races, the pole sitter has not won. Pascal Verlein seventh from 18th on the grid. Hughes eighth, ninth, Brast tenth, Buemi. Gunter in 11th, Lotter at 12th, the Grassi ticked and Freitz, the top 15. Roland, Sende Camera, Muller, Mortara, Dennis, Fenestraz and Nato 
the 22 drivers, although uh, from Muller downwards, they all retired. Robin Freintz finishes in 15th position. And uh, as a result, he will go ahead of Kelvin van der Linde in the points, uh, for what it's worth, because he finished 15th and van der Linde's best result was 16th. So Freintz up to 22nd in the championship standings. The most pointless piece of information that I'll give you today. Uh, that's the promise. Later on, we will have uh, a little look at the driver's room when they all just watch the highlights and chat. It's good. God, Rene Rath looks a bit tired, doesn't he? The two McLarens had a quiet race to 8th and ninth. Mitch Evans, huge congratulations. This is a nice moment. Both of you up on the podium after what's been a bit of a torrid start uh, in the last couple of races. Congratulations. Thanks, thanks. Um, honestly, this has uh, come at a perfect time because we've had a tough start and the car's been quick. So to finally get a victory or just some solid points is, um, is incredible. So uh, a Drago one, two, three. Uh, Nick pushed me all the way. We pushed each other. Both teams ex executed you know, brilliantly and this is down to all the hard work. There's a lot of craft that goes in, um, a lot of simulations, a lot of just, you know, to try and put these races together in terms of strategy is, is not easy. Um, and they got, the team guided me, you know, perfectly. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't want it much closer than that. It was incredibly close at the end. Nick Cassidy pushing you really hard on the last lap. Yeah, obviously it was all about track position and where you want to be at certain phases of the races. And, you know, I had a good energy advantage quite early on, but it was just trying to find my time to, to use that energy advantage. I thought maybe I went a little bit too early, but look, because um, once Nick got behind me, he was able to accumulate some energy and stick in my toe. But obviously we got the victory, so obviously we did it. We did, um, we did the right job. So, um, yeah, just super happy to, to get some, some big runs, you know, some big points on the board. All that hard work paid off. Enjoy the moment. Thanks very much. Mitch Evans. So Mitch Evans taking the lead from Nick Cassidy on the run down into the first corner. Had a great fight throughout in the closing stages. The three of them were right together. And that's what it meant to James Barkley. As the three Jaguar powertrain cars came across the line to take to fill up the podium positions. Even Porsche haven't managed to do that this season. They've had two cars on the podium. James and Adrian Atkinson are celebrating together. Nick Cassidy, a third consecutive podium. That win just narrowly escaping you. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, you know, I said to you earlier, I'll be super happy with the podium today. With a race like that, you can't not be happy, right? I think that was Formula E at its best. So much fun from in the car. Um, I hope it was a good watch. Very strategic. Sam did a great job as well. So one, two, three, Jaguar, pretty cool. Were the team keeping you in the loop about how much energy Sam had? Yeah, yeah, I knew. And, and that was a lot of the reason for getting Mitch to go. And I knew to get the win then would be pretty difficult. I'd have to do something special on Mitch um, to turn that around. But I was at a high risk of, of being third. So was it just about staying safe and getting the points? Uh, look, we all want to win. So I, I tried my best to win, but that's where the, the cookie crumbled. And um, I think we got the, one of the best outcomes. Absolutely. Congratulations. Incredible result for you and the team. Second place then for Nick Cassidy. Takes him up to third in the championship standings. Sort of stealthily making his way into title contention. Qualified well, raced well. This was when he took two cars to move into the lead of the race, getting to Costa and Van Dorn into turn one. Past Van Dorn again a little later on in the E-Prix. And ultimately, no matter how hard he tried to pass Evans, couldn't quite make it stick at the end. But he managed to fit ahead of this man. Sam Bird, a phenomenal recovery drive. Qualified back in P10 because of the penalty that you had and to finish on the podium, what a performance. Yeah, amazing, amazing for Jaguar TCS Racing and Jaguar globally as a group to, to get the podium locked out. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure whether that's been done before. So massive hats up to everybody here back at the base. It's a brilliant result. So I'm super, super stoked for the team. As, as for myself, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed because I rocked up to the back of the lead, lead, uh, the lead two with 2% more, but I just had repercussions of India going on in my head. So 
to settle in and not do anything silly, bring home the points. I think I've got fastest lap as well. So it's good points for the team and we, we roll on to Berlin. It's a fantastic result. Don't be disappointed. Enjoy the celebration. Thank you very much, Sam Bird, for Jaguar TCS Racing. So Sam Bird finishing in third place for the Jaguar TCS Racing team. He got, he was, he just managed to avoid all the melee at the start and then picked his way through the order. Was running in sixth position in the early stages and then just started to climb through, getting ahead of Van Dorn, closing in on the top two. Wheel to wheel with Cassidy into the final corner, but not quite able to do anything about the Kiwis, plural, in front of him. But still, second podium of the season for Sam Bird after his teammate Mitch Evans took the win. Jake Dennis, coming into this, I know obviously you had massive ambitions about doing phenomenally well, getting your season back on track. Just on an emotional level, how do you respond to that? We can see how frustrated you are, obviously. That's uh, a target on my back, you know, it's uh, two races now, just driving my own race and then some plonker at a right, um, 100 metres behind me just forgets the brake and then just smashes into me. It's typical, I don't know what else I can do. I don't know what he was thinking, I've seen it on board and he's like in his own little world, so I'm pretty annoyed with Dan. I don't know what the situation is with that, but he's just forgot to brake and just smashed into me. So, yeah, here's what it is. Uh, move on to Berlin. How long will something like this hurt for? Because obviously you're an ambitious guy, you want to win this championship. Oh, that's a lot, you know, just for myself and the team, you spend a week or like doing a full preparation away from home and then, you know, all the work you do behind the scenes before that and then just for some geezers to forget to break, it's ridiculous. So, happened in uh, Hyderabad with Rast, happened here with Tictum and I don't know, I need to start looking forward instead of in their mirrors the whole time, so I'm pretty annoyed to be honest. And in terms of your position, obviously that's now been affected. Your goal coming into this, you said, actually, even if you were P9, you'd do pretty well. That obviously hasn't been the case. Is your goal still, bam, top of the podium, end of the season? Yeah, for sure. We can still win the championship. It's just frustrating. Obviously, right now I'm emotional and just annoyed with the whole situation. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's only round six, whatever it is. So it's a long way to go. But we've thrown away, like, probably around about 40 points now. So, yeah, it's, it's not good enough. Not many people would speak to us afterwards like this, so thank you for your time, Jake. Yeah, cheers. Oh, very strong words, boys. Very strong words from Jake Dennis there. Uh, not the best of compliments for, I think it was Dan Tickton. We're going to take a look at the incident a little bit later on. Actually, we'll look at it now. Let's, let's take a look. Here we go. Here's the incident. He was saying that Dan Tickton draws straight into him. Yeah, so the Come contact happened in turn one here, and then Jake Dennis in his right rear, he's, he's lost, lost braking, and he only chance to try and miss the car in front of him was to try to dive into the apex. So, um, yeah, distraught. Still in a decent championship position. Uh, still within the top three. And, uh, yeah, leaving here with a lot of missed points. The, the last three races, a lot of missed You're points. You're a former teammate of Jake Dennis. Is that the kind of, of reaction you would get from him? Is that what we can expect? Yeah, for sure. I mean, these, these guys work so hard uh, for these weekends just to try and get into the top 10 and for that to happen. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate, especially um, from the, the past races that he's had and such a strong start to the season, but he just hasn't had very good luck the past three. Must be frustrating, Nelson. Well, but that's why I was saying starting up in a top five, top six position is so important because you get away from that high risk of something happening like that. I mean, it's not even for track position during the race. It's just getting away from the high chances of these kind of situations to happen. So you need to qualify well. How's Jake going to take this tonight? Because we know that when he celebrates, he celebrates hard. When he doesn't, when he's down, what's, what's he like then? Be I, I don't know. Word on the street is that it's uh, Stoffel Van Doren's birthday tomorrow. So I think uh, there's a little click that's going to be going out tonight. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, I wonder if Jake is going to be popping corks. I don't know. Maybe he will to drown his sorrows. Who knows? Anyway, we've got more to dissect from the race here in Sao Paulo. Interesting stuff. I'm currently joined by the most shredded man in all of Sao Paulo, Dan Tickton, right now. You seldom get to see this, by the way. Dan, I've got to talk to you about that incident with Jake Dennis. Yeah. What happened from your end? Uh, it just didn't stop. Um, uh, this, like, concrete surface that uh, was laid before the race weekend, the, the grey stuff, when there's a bit of rubber on it, it's OK. But if you're offline, it's... I mean, I was braking even earlier than the car I was trying to overtake, and it just didn't stop. Obviously, combined with the fact there's more dirt offline, it was just, 
I've never, never known anything like that in my whole racing career. Just did not stop. It um, wasn't a technical issue. It was actually just the surface, really. Literally, like, because I was right near the wall as well, and I thought, right, I'll break a bit early. I braked, and just nothing happened. And then, obviously, you try and brake more, and then that sometimes makes it worse, depending on the systems and stuff. And the car just, I just didn't decelerate. Like, I, I think I would have only have just made turn three. <laughs> you know, it's like, it just didn't stop. So, um, Are you going to speak to Jake, by the way, about this? Yeah, well, of course, yeah. If I see him, I'll, I'll go and apologise, because obviously I didn't mean to do it at all. Um, it's just, unfortunately, it's just a bit of a chaotic race from, from, from everyone. I got hit a couple of times. Um, just, yeah, just, I think the way the corners are, one, two, three, four, five, six, they're all like concertina corners. So, like, it just encourages these kinds of incidents. I mean, every time in four, five, and six, people were just touching each other, losing a bit of front wing, or so it, it really was probably quite an exciting one for the fans, but um, quite a difficult one to manage from a driver's perspective. Yeah, it was amazing to watch, mate, and keep keep up the gym. <laughs> All right, Dan Tickton there, uh, giving us his reasons and his excuses, I guess, as to what happened with that incident. We saw earlier on Jake Dennis not happy. What do you, what's your take on that, Oliver? Yeah, seeing the replay from his on board, I mean, he was three cars behind Jake. Um, so, yeah, as, as he said, it can be very slippery offline heading into turn one with a, a heavy braking zone um, like that. But, yeah, diff difficult, obviously. Here it is again. Obviously not intentional. Uh, Jake was just a, an innocent bystander at that point. Nelson, he's taking a lot of speed into that corner there. Yeah, I mean, I understand it's not his fault because it was dirty. I, I, we, we heard his excuses, but you need to understand it's the, it's the, it's the beginning of the race. You, are gonna you have a chance of posi positioning yourself into the dirt. You have to be careful in the beginning of the race. You know, Everybody's going to be bunching up, breaking late, so you need to have a bit of a margin of, of in insurance or a bit, a bit of a, a margin just in case you lock up, in case somebody touches you in the back, you still have room in front of you to be able to stop and do the corner, not take, you know, I mean, luckily he only took one car out. The speed he arrived, it could have taken even more than one car, yeah, car it, out over there. Yeah, it could have been brutal for, for, for many drivers. Uh, but, you know, he seems to be a driver or the driver of the season so far who's matured into himself as a driver. You know, he came into the series, his reputation did precede him, let's not beat around the bush, but now he seems to have developed and calmed down a little bit and matured as a driver. Yeah, it seems Sixth. like that he's found a home in, in Formula E. Uh, especially with with uh, Neo 333 racing, he has the opportunity to, uh, you know, alongside Sergio Sete Camaro to take that team forward, and I think he, he feels a sense of pride in that. Um, and obviously, yes, getting older, becoming more mature, uh, putting his past behind him. Um, that's that's unlike Dan Tictum in Formula E to to make a mistake like that. Absolutely. All right, let's put that to bed, shall we? We've got about a minute till we get to the podium. So let's celebrate everything that Jaguar has done today. Mitch Evans, top of the podium. Sam Bird in third. And then their customer team in second with Nick Cassidy. A stunning performance from the Jaguars, Nelson. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw that coming. I mean, we saw their performance in all the races, all qualifying sessions. If it wasn't the Jags, Cassidy or Buemi were up there up front. It was always one of the four cars was always up front or in the top two or in the top three. So. It was just a matter of time to see all of them on the podium. Um, they have a very good powertrain, very good drivers, very mature drivers. So uh, there's no reason for them to not well, to be Let me ask you this, time. Nelson, because you've driven for Jaguar. Uh, was there any pressure on James Barkley and the team? Well, they did arrive one year after everybody else. So they were playing catch up when I was there still. You know, I brought some of the engineers that are still there. Phil Charles, for example, he came with me. He was one of the demands that I had, okay, when I come, I want to bring Phil with somebody I had worked together back in Formula One. So the team was still structuring itself and still growing a little bit. Uh, and obviously, they're doing great up now. Yeah, all right, well, let's go and join the celebrations. Let's go down to the podium and celebrate with the Jaguars. So, time for the podium procedure. James Barkley, James Barkley the team principal. principal of the Jaguar TCS racing team, heading out onto the podium. A remarkable podium in Sao Paulo. This Samba Dromo Anyembi is the venue for Sao Paulo's carnival celebrations a month ago. And the, the podium itself is like a, an amalgamation of the best floats from this year's parade. And it uses recycled elements to create this vibrant podium. Third place, another podium finish for Sam Bird. 
24th podium of his Formula E career. Second of the season. Gains a few points. Heads back a little bit into towards championship contention. We are a third of the way through the season, nearly a third of the way through the season. It's difficult to know whether it's too late, Karun, or actually we've got plenty of time. I can never quite work it out. I mean, it, we're it's either only a third of the way through, or we're already a third of the way through. I think only a third of the way through. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot more to come in this season. Yeah, boys, a a lot more. You're a glass Next. half full kind of guy. I am. Unlike you. Okay. I'm just. Yeah, yes. exactly. uh, Nick Cassidy. Nick Cassidy. His second, second place in the last three races. He's been on the podium in all of the last three races. First time he's ever had three podiums in a row. Last season, he scored two in the whole year. So he's in strong form here, Cassidy. Not quite on the top step yet. I feel like that'll come, and the Envision team are doing a good job. No, he's doing a great job. They, they were on the back foot when they yeah, collectively at the start of the year in uh, Duria, but yeah. since then, all the Jaguar teams seem to have recovered form. Especially this man. Mitch Evans with his seventh victory in the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. And it is the top step. So that is a really uh, interesting podium, isn't it? It's Brazilian. With, with That's Brazilian. For sure. That's definitely with the, uh, the animals and the cars and all sorts. The carnival float onto which Evans hops onto the top step. And now on the top step of the Flodium, Flotium, we will have the national anthem for Mitch Evans, the New Zealander on the top step. Now it will be the British National Anthem for yeah, Jaguar no TCS Racing as they rather remarkably the actually take their first the victory of the season. Time for the podium presentations. First of all, it'll be the uh, the, uh, the um, winning team, Giovanni Guerra, the president of the CBA, which is the Brazilian Motorsport Confederation, and that for Jaguar, another winning trophy, their ninth win in Formula E. And this one means a lot. They always mean a lot to all these teams, but yeah, they knocked it out of the park today. Rockin' Broad, the uh, Division President Process Industries of ABB, and the third place trophy out to Sam Bird. As I say, Bird's 24th podium finish. 
from 10th on the grid. A very strong drive. Beatrice Sanchez, the head of the region of America at Julius Baer. Nick Cassidy receives the trophy. But for the winner, it's the mayor of Sao Paulo, Ricardo Nunes, who hands the trophy over to Mitch Evans on the top step. Evans, the winner, on the top step of the podium. And now for the Formula E superfan, Victor Alexandri Balsecki, to present the Moet to and our winner. Now the Formula E superfan will hand the Moet over to Mitch Evans. And this will be just the start of the celebration for Evans. Formula E brought the party to Sao Paulo. What a wild race that was. The early stages were almost impossible to keep up with. It looked as though it had settled down, maybe into a bit of a lull in the middle part of the race. Don't really know why I doubted it. This is the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. It's always going to kick off at some point. And we went on to the final lap with three drivers within half a second. No idea which was going to win, but it was Evans who held on. Jaguar have finally proven their pace, proven they can fight at the front, proven they can win races. They are yet to prove in Formula E that they can win a championship. Is this going to be their year? Big, big day for Jaguar, Vernon. Yes, indeed it was, Jack. Our championship leader, Pascal Verlaine, in seventh place today. But what a race. I mean, that's that, what, a, what, what a season we're having with this new Gen 3 car. Yeah, the season's as close, uh, the championship's as close as it's been all year, both in the drivers and the teams. Um, it's going to be really interesting looking forward to see um, how things stack up in, in Berlin in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's so Insane good. race. It seemed like the, the Indy 500, Daytona 500, NASCAR, up to the last lap, we had no clue who was going to win. Everybody pushing to the end. I wish every, I think every race is going to be like this. And it's been really cl crazy till the, to the last lap. So congratulations, Formula E, on the track, on the new car. It's been just amazing what we've been seeing. Yeah, it was fantastic. It really was. Usually we have to move out of the way of the trucks. But because you're here, Nelson, the trucks are moving <laughs> out of the way of you. Uh, it's been a superb, superb race here in uh, Sao Paulo. But then we move on to our nemesis, Berlin. The Tempelhof Airport, a controversial surface. Some teams do exceptionally well. Some teams have an absolute nightmare in Tempelhof. Yes, it's going to be the, the first track in three races now that is known to these teams. So looking forward to, to joining you guys at that one. And Cooper has 4,000 guests coming over there. So that's going to be a tough weekend for them. Was all the pressure they have built up. We'll until see you now. in Berlin. Formula E returns to South America, bringing the party to Brazil. Cassidy goes to the front of the field. And Evans takes the lead. The checkered flag falls. Evans wins in Sao Paulo. Magnificent race. Magnificent win for Jaguar.